Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word being a light onto our path. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for Psalms 119 and just all the things your word does, even making us wiser than our teachers. If our teachers weren't in the word and we're 18 years old and we know the word, we have a wisdom they don't have, even though we still have to be um, submissive and respectful. We still know that your word is more powerful than any Socrates or Plato or um, Richard Dawkins or whatever his name was or Einstein that your word is wiser, stronger, powerful. And Lord, help us to be so grateful that we have access to the, your word in this country, yeah, yeah. that we don't have to die because we bought somebody a Bible. We don't have to die because we say Jesus Christ is the only way to you. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for that privilege and help us to take advantage of the open door of freely speaking your truth while it's yet day because we know the night is coming and there's phases of nightness through the centuries. And Lord, just help us to be grateful every day that we're in a season where we're um, able to be free and help us not to take it for granted. In Jesus' name, yeah. hallelujah. And hello, television land. I don't think of saying that during my openings very often, but I'm very conscious that both uh, YouTube and the uh, cable access in our local area, that we have the huge privilege of being able to come to you from those sources. And thank you for those of you that from time to time do watch what we have to say. And uh, you know you're welcome to come and visit. The stats would be on the website that you see on the screen, I think at the end of the program. You can look up the website and then see where we are, when we meet, and all that kind of thing. Amen. And know that we would love to have you. We really would. Uh, I started a series on godly relationships. You're, today, both sermons, I know a lot of, you know, how to win friends and influence people. They want you to uh, concentrate on the positive. And I know the very fact today I'm going to basically talk about who not to walk with. And that can be perceived as negative. But I don't want to, you're intelligent enough to know if I'm trying to twist it all into a positive in order to avoid the negative. The verses I'm reading are straight from the Bible. And if God chooses to um, season Proverbs and other places with lots of negatives, and um, you think he's a failure in public relations as a result of that, that take that up with him. I'm just going to quote the word today. And you might say, well, a lot of us are adults, and we already have our relationships, and I think I chose wise. That's fine. But you know what you've got to remember? You're not in here learning just for yourself. Please remember that. You're learning to teach others as well. You're learning to role model to others as well. We cannot think, I come to church to get knowledge and revelation for myself. That is true, you do. But you have to teach and exhort and comfort and admonish. And what you do to do that is know the word. Admonish it. Like I've heard people say, this is Rosemary's opinion, before you assume it's my opinion, come to me and ask for a deeper list of verses that back up that opinion so that you can say the Bible says. Because as soon as you say Rosemary says, if somebody doesn't like me, they're going to dismiss it. They're going to have a prejudice right away. I don't want to hear it. She's bossy. Yeah, I'm bossy. I'm one of the two bosses here. Of course I'm bossy. I realize there are different techniques of being bossy, low key, high key, but you know what I'm bossy about? But the Bible says, the Bible says. The Bi so I could say to you, God's bossy. Think about that a minute. What I, he is bossy. Why? He's the boss. My and Robert's bossness compares not one whit with God's right to speak the truth. And what's so nice about this job is the book I quote is the boss of all bosses. 
Jesus is Lord, and what's beautiful too is I preach to people who agree with me on that. So if I can show you in the Word, God said don't do this. You can't say Rosemary's bossy, and I don't like what she's saying. You're saying God's bossy, and in this case, I don't like what he's saying. Then you get to deal with rebellion inside of yourself because we all want to be nicer than God. When the Bible says don't mess with that person, oh, but I knew his mom. I've known that kid as a baby. Now they're 19 and they call me Aunt Diane. They just love me and I couldn't possibly tell them they shouldn't have done that because the Bible says they won't like me anymore. I've told people things like what you do in your own home is your business. You don't do it in ours. I still feel guilty about a couple of times I got my bossiness was tinged with, well, maybe it was God's anger because I don't expect a fellow pastor's son to be in my TV room watching, like I told you, Eddie Murphy Raw. One of those two pastor's sons should have said something. <laughs> you know, and I was angry when I saw that neither one of them had the courage to say, this is not appropriate. You know, then I, it's hard to tell where your own soulish anger is expressing itself or if it's the spirit of God making it a point. It's really hard. It's very hard to tell the difference sometimes. But anyway, the Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse 20, Proverbs 13, verse 20 says, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools shall suffer harm. Now, what would you infer we have to learn from this verse? The company we keep is a reflection of who we become. Yeah, that's true. You just interpreted the, void, the verse. Mm -hmm. What do I have to learn in order to obey this, to walk out this verse? What do I have to learn? Uh, well, you would have to learn that you, um, when you walk with certain people, you're going to pick up those aspects. So you want to walk with people who are wise and walking in a righteous path versus somebody who would not care and wa would walk yeah. any willy-nilly way. And you're, you're still doing a good job of interpreting the verse. I wonder if he'll get what I'm looking for. That's kind of a trick, isn't it, when somebody's looking for one thing and then you, you're thinking another. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that as a setup. Well, what wisdom is. Say what? What wisdom is. What wisdom is and learn to recognize the difference between who's a fool and who's a wise man so you don't walk with the wrong ones. Bingo. That's what I was looking for. How can we discern who's wise? How can we discern who's a fool? And what does that entail? The one thing the world says that we should never, never do. What does that entail? Judge. you got to judge. you got to judge. If the Bible says you'll suffer harm walking with a fool, like I said, we're going to concentrate today on the fools. <clears throat> then I have to know who is a fool. Now the problem on this earth is we have these bodies and souls that can be magnetized by beauty, by wealth, by charisma, by giftings. We can be magnetized by that. And once we're fully hooked by those people and somebody comes along and says, you're walking with a fool, we are highly indignant and offended and we're tempted to kick that person to the curb. Why? Because they just call somebody we're magnetized to, that we feel all electrified around. Our friend just said, you're walking with a fool, which if they're a Christian implies you're going to get in trouble. You're going to suffer harm if they know this verse. Find out what a fool is and avoid walking with them closely. Now, Keep in mind, this whole series is about godly relationships, meaning it's not somebody you work with and you have a professional relationship. It's not the store clerk. It's not your neighbor at the local annual neighborhood gathering. It's, that's not walk with, companions with, walk closely with. It's like some people say, Jesus just loved to hang around sinners, making it sound like it's cool to have a, a secular friend. That is not why Jesus walked with sinners. Jesus came to seek and save what was lost, and he told his disciples, if this town does not receive your message, what were they told to do? Shake the dust off your seat, get out of Dodge. 
You gave them what I sent you to give them. Get out of there. Oh, but I've grown really attached to this family. Who are you going to obey, God or man? Your soul or God's directives? Boy, that must have been hard um, when the children of Israel knew the fate of the Egyptians. You can't imagine how intertwined these people probably got with their, the people they were working with. You know, you, you, the Stockholm Syndrome was probably alive and well there. They were their masters, but you work around somebody all the time. You can get affection and connectivity. I was going to bring out that particular word, the Stockholm oh. Syndrome, which means if you hang around the wrong pe people long enough, you literally take on their nature, like what's the rich girl in California? Did Patty, Patty Hearst. Patty. Is it Patty Hearst? She Patty was Hearst. kidnapped. That's the but then home, it got to the place where she was literally holding up banks with the group of I people that. that kidnapped her. She took on their, their uh, emotions and took on their thought and whatever. And it's the same thing. The blacks don't realize we have a Stockholm Syndrome because we have taken on the slave masters uh, opinion about things and, and whatever he says and whatever we, we go along with. Don't even realize, like you said, what's the word say about killing babies? Yeah. How in the world can you be a Democrat and, and I mean, and call yourself a Christian and be a Democrat? Mm -hmm. Find out where they're coming from. If you're in there to be a light and expose, God called you to it. That's one thing. If you're going along and shutting your mouth, that's another. I was talking with Ben the other day and I said, you realize when the last election thing, they literally wanted to keep God out of their literally. platform, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And they got scared and put it back in, but they were literally not even going to put God. How can you vote for that with people with that mindset? But we, we're, 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 we don't realize we're in the Stockholm uh, syndrome and thinking. I told you years ago, the whole Olympic thing is gr grounded in the whole Greek god mythology and the opening activities have everything to do with that. And now it's getting worse and worse. I won't go into detail about it, but it's getting worse and worse and worse. And by the way, um, the Super Bowl is a different story, but please, please, I can't tell you what to do. You're grown. And if that's your mantra, you're, you're not even grown yet. In other words, when I advise and your attitude, you can't tell me what to do. I put you around 15. You understand what I'm saying? But if you're grown and I give you a strong suggestion, I know it's up to you. You don't have to spend your life proving you can do what you want to do. I know that. You can kill the whole neighborhood. I can't keep you from doing that. I can't keep you from doing anything. But anyway, the, I appreciate it if you wouldn't watch the intermission thing. Because it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And the, a lot of the performance are into witchcraft, witchcraft symbols, having sold their soul to the devil. You understand? And I'm saying, please don't get sucked into that. Please. Now, having said all that, see, there's a verse in here about don't sit, you know, like who not to hang with. Don't sit in the seat of the scorners. You get in your car. Can you believe Rosemary said that? I'm, I'm intelligent enough to know what's of God and what's of the devil. The things of the devil don't get into me. What did I just read? You walk with fools, you'll suffer harm. That's not me, that's God. That's not me. Don't scorn me and mock me because I'm quoting scripture. Make sure you shouldn't mock me, period, because I'm your pastor. That with, like, you honor your mom no matter how backward she is in some areas, you still got to honor her. Okay, same here, right? But I'm saying, if you're going to score on me, make sure that behind my words, you can't find any strong scripture because you're not mocking me then. You're mocking the word of God that I was the messenger for. Keep that in mind before you, you go to your little, if Rosemary were here, she would, she'd tell us to stop watching this. <laughs> Get past whoever told you, your mom, your dad, your teacher, me, and go into what's the Holy Spirit telling you is wise. Bypass 15. Just bypass it. <laughs> just, and two, the no's. Anyway, moving right along. Um, and the Bible gives us tools to judge what's foolish. 
both in the Old Covenant and in the New Covenant. People to avoid being friends with. And this is not exhaustive, what I've got on my notes. Psalm 14, Psalm 14, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They've done abominable works. There's none that doeth good. The fool, so if you're hanging around somebody as a close friend and they say, I don't believe in a God, or they say they're agnostic, that's coming way too close. Oh, I'm still open. No, you don't believe right now in God the Father who sent his son Jesus Christ and what fellowship can I have with you if you don't believe that? People, you've got to get beyond the magnetism. There's nothing more excited than being with a young person who, and they have parties that are just downright fun and they all love to dance and you love the music and somebody's got a beautiful home with a sliding door to a pool in the back. And you know behind your mind, these are not God-fearing people, but you're having fun. So what? There's pleasure in sin for a season. Get over it. Move on. If you walk with a fool, they don't believe in God? Well, they're Muslim and they believe Jesus Christ was a great prophet. They don't believe in God the Creator. Their God has no son. It's an idol God. It's a different God. And I hope you that are listening on television hear me loud and clear. Do not date a Muslim if you are a Christian. Don't do it. You're, you're serving different gods. Avoid the one that doesn't believe. In 2 Corinthians 6.14, do not be unequally yoked with unbeliever. What partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Don't be unequally yoked. Don't start a business with a non-believer. Their principles are entirely different than yours. Now, to look good in the community, they might embrace what are commonly called godly principles. But the reality is, underneath all that do-good appearance, they're going to be conniving. Read the works of the flesh. If they're not walking in the spirit, they only have one other realm to walk out of. The flesh. Read the list. You can't be yoked with that person. That junk will seep into your business relationship. You cannot trust an unbeliever. Are there some good people among unbelievers? It would appear to be so, but it's impossible that it's true because only in the Spirit can I have the fruit of the Spirit. I cannot plant an apple tree seed and get a thorn bush or vice, you know, something good is going to come out of something bad or something bad is going to have come out of a good seed. The seed we have planted, the seed of the nature of Christ in us, has the fruit of the Spirit. Read that verse. It'll tell you clearly why you cannot be equally yoked with a non-believer. Very clearly. My friend is so nice to me. They, they can turn on a dime. Christians can turn on a dime. They get out of the Spirit into the flesh. We have to fight that. How much more somebody that doesn't even have the Spirit of God living in them? But I'm saying people that are not Christians, they will try to imitate the fruit of the Spirit because it's good business policy. Have you ever seen a hostess at a restaurant? I just about want to call it out sometime, but I realize it's not fair for a non-believer. You come in, hi, welcome, we're so happy to have you. What can I do for you? And then as you're walking out the door, look them in the face again. As you're walking, especially if you don't have any, anything in your hand, bring it over to a retail store. Look at their face again. Some are smart enough to say, oh, I hope you come back again. Was everything okay? Uh, some of them are smart enough to do that. Some of them, you don't get a smile again. You get it coming in. I'll even bring it home further. Being a glow speaker. You remember this? Whoever the speaker was, we treated him like the Queen of Sheba. Come the next month with your friend who's speaking, you're invisible. You remember that? 
that first reception was not genuine. Because if you genuinely love me or Ronnie or Rebecca or Ben, it's consistent. No, I'm not going to get an honorarium if I'm a guest. No, they're not going to put me up in a hotel if I'm a guest. But you can have the same friendliness and warmth that you had, but it's not there. What was that first demonstration? This is how we're supposed to act with the speaker. And then the next month, they don't even remember you hardly from the month before. <laughs> You remember that? It was crazy. That's the reason why if, you, if you're looking for a wife, you don't just take them out two times and get smitten with their legs. You find out who they are. You know why some guys want to so quickly get next to you? Because they realize that once they've kissed you, once they've held your hand and thrilled you, then as you find out who they really are, it's going to be harder to not be with them because you're throwing good money after bad. You understand what I just said? So let me get a quick connection so it's not easy for you to walk when you find out that what I said I was, I'm not really. The shiny object you saw in the beginning does not have the shine. It's fool's gold. Yeah, I, Bishop Abney used to tell a joke about this guy that um, there was a singer in church and, and she looked pretty and she sang like an angel. You remember this joke? I probably told you that over the years. So he ended up marrying this woman. First night, honeymoon, she took off her teeth, her <laughs> wig, her eyelashes. And he looked, and more, you know, just didn't look like, washed her face, the makeup came out. He looked at her, and he said, honey, could you sing a song? <laughs> sing, baby. sing, baby. Please keep singing. Keep singing. I think we need to invest in separate bedrooms. <laughs> you know, I thought that was funny, but all of it was fake. Every last thing that made her physically pretty was, was fake. By the time she took off her girdle, it probably really got fake. But anyway, <laughs> make sure you know that whoever you're with. I remember a day that when I was dating back in the day, all I had to know is, do you believe in God? And tell my parents that. And I'd imply, oh, they believe in God. That's not enough. That's not enough. You got to find out their relationship with the Lord, their relationship with His Word, their relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, huh? And, by. and then you watch, you test, you judge. Is he or she a fool? There's a, a thing that talks about there's treasure to be found in the house of the wise. In Proverbs, there's a verse like that. In the world, there's a saying, and I'm not sure if it's in the Bible this way, but it is in the world. A fool and his money are soon parted. You've heard this, right? Okay, you get a wife. She's got a good job. You think, good, the two of us together finally will be able to get out of this neighborhood. Then we can have a kid because the school system is way better over here. Over here, they'd probably their lunch money would be gone every day. Over here, they can be safer. I can get a safe. You checking out safe areas? Cost less to live in on safe areas. Cost way more living. Okay, so I got a wife who, as long as we don't have kids, she's working full time. We're both work, we're saving our money together. And next thing you know, come time for the reckoning of what do we have now collectively to see about a new house. She was steady taking all her friends out to eat, praying for the bill. She was just, she went, yeah, we, we know somebody. Didn't he marry two different women with the same problem? Would go, they'd, every paycheck they got, they'd spend it out gambling. That dude, not just her money, her, none of us in Michigan, her, it's community property, but you know what I mean. But his as well, whatever you give her as well. A fool doesn't have treasure in their house because they're into immediate gratification. The Bible says quick wealth brings a snare. Oh, there's this new investment. 
Invest all your money in, name your own scam, and then within one year, you will have, no, quick wealth brings a snare. Wanting quick wealth. Bring, who's a fool? Somebody, oh, my poor kid, when he was around eight or nine, he'd get these kid magazines, and in the back, invariably, there'd be some contest where you can win X. He took it personally, like he surely would be the winner of whatever the X was. I'm like, baby, they do this so you can get on a mailing list, so they can dangle things in front of you. The chances of you actually winning that are almost nil. He didn't believe me. He'd be all excited. And I've met some grown people. They win the first, I know somebody won $250, but that ticket was good for another drawing too. A final, we're back in the early 70s, what I'm talking. And I mean, he's already spending what that second round is going to give him in his mind. Foolish, foolish, foolish. Just to be able to be content, keep working hard, um, whatever. That is peaceful. People that, that don't read the word and figure out how to live wisely, you do not want to marry them. You do not want them to be your best friend. Say, a fool's going to come to trouble. There's a, a verse in Proverbs that says, if you keep rescuing this, I think it's an angry person, it's, it's going to happen again. So you say to yourself, I will never date somebody. The first time I have to bail them out of jail because they went off on somebody at a bar with a pool stick. First time they said, maybe I'll bail them out the first time, but we're done. We're done. Because you know what the Bible says about an angry person like that? You have to do it again and again and again. I'll never do that again. <laughs> they walk with the Lord. They don't have any self-control. They're going to get angry again and go off on people. Until they give their heart to the Lord, that's who they are. They're a violent, angry person. I just about said, man, until I remembered a person in our lives close to us who was just as violent and treacherous as any man I knew. <laughs> she skipped the state with a court uh, case pending in court for going off at somebody at a nightclub on 54th and Division. What did they call that thing? Anybody remember that nightclub? <laughs> Say what? Yeah. She went out, she got kicked out of there. Guy pressed charges. She didn't even wait to see what the court date. She got out of Dodge. She got out of Dodge rather than pay a hospital bill, too. And she has gotten away with so much. And then she became a Christian. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, as soon as you get with a fool, your life takes a whole different turn. You must be with people that love the Lord are wise, you can mutually exhort and comfort, admonish one another, help each other stay on. The Bible says if one falls, the other one can pick them up. You will not have righteousness, peace, and joy if you got one foot in the kingdom of God and the other foot smack dab or that person's foot is in your heart from the other kingdom. You're not, you'll be double-minded. Let no man think he can receive anything of God if you're like that. Who you run with, and you know what you're going to say? You know what you're going to say if you're a teenager? I only got a couple. I don't know if I, yeah, you're the only teenager in the room right now, aren't you? You know, many teenagers would say, I see what they are, but they had a really rough childhood, and his dad kept being gone, and he needs love. And my love, will help him get over it. It's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. Not happening. You'll be ensnared. And there's your whole, you know how you put your hand over your face with the sun out there? You just block the whole sun with this person in your eyes. You're, ain't no sunshine when she's gone, the verse should say. Sunshine shines when she is gone. <laughs> anyway. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your word being a light on our feet. Help us to take it seriously. Help us to listen with all of our heart. Help us to even examine the list of friends we have right now who we genuinely 
have been able to speak into their lives and witness and share your word, and they want more, and who we just enjoy, even though, let's face it, we barely admonish them using the word or comfort them or even speak of you to them. We're just having a good time with them. Lord, show us clearly, help us to be willing to love you more than we love the world. Please help us with that in Jesus' name. Amen.